Jones sweeps the Midwest. Second career victory of the NASCAR Xfinity Series going to come today. Eric Jones, a winner at Chicagoland. And the Sprint Cup Series heads to Sonoma. And we're coming to green in the Toyota Safe Mark 350. We talk to Eric Jones, plus Sonoma Raceway Chief Steve Page and driver Ross Kenseth. Tonight on Fast Talk. Brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. Stop by your local Napa Auto Parts store and conquer the job with Napa know-how. Wix Filters. Visit Wix Filters' Facebook page and share your love for engines. Wix. We love engines. NBC. NASCAR makes its triumphant return to NBC Sports July 4th weekend. And by your neighborhood Winn-Dixie. Now in for Doug Rice, here's Steve Richards. And welcome in to Charlotte Motor Speedway. Steve Richards along with the more influential Sadler brother, Hermie Sadler. You got tonight. that right. You're, I, that's why I said it. I know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> Even though the Cup uh, guys had the weekend off and they were scattered all over the country and all over the world in some cases, as far as Dale Jr. is concerned, there was some great racing over the weekend at Iowa Speedway in Chicagoland. And man, it was the Eric Jones kind of weekend. You know, Eric Jones has is, is just had one of those seasons that we've seen drivers go through that when they show up to the racetrack every week, they're fast every week, and things, the racing gods just don't smile down on them. He, we could always say this, coulda, woulda, shoulda, but <laughs> won a handful of Camping World Truck Series races. And finally, uh, uh, Friday night at an hour, he just, you know, everything, nothing really you know, nothing went wrong and he qualified up front. His pit crew was they, everything like they'd been doing all year, but just nothing went wrong. And he uh, went on to victory lane Friday night. Then he goes to Chicago land for the Xfinity series race. Drew Herring practices and, you know, prepares the 54 car for, for, for Eric Jones. He gets up his first laps on the racetrack or in qualifying and he qualifies the car and has a spirited battle off and on during the day with Ryan Blaney, mm -hmm. and he ends up coming home uh, with the victory in the Xfinity Series. So uh, we'll have Eric Jones in a, little, in a little while, and we can ask him. But I would say this kind of weekend maybe makes up for some of the disappointing weekends he's had earlier this season. What kind of boost do you think that gives to him? Because he had issues in the past month before this race and getting not only one victory but three, if you count the, uh, the one at Berlin Raceway. Well, I, 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 certainly a boost, but I, I get the sense from talking to Eric that he is – a very, very confident young racer. I, I don't believe that he has ever questioned his ability or the ability of his team. Uh, they've just had anything that could go wrong has gone wrong. I believe he's done a good job of, you know, uh, being confident and, and, and moving on to the next race. Now he's, you know, shown some emotions after the races and those kind of things, but he's, he's a kid, you know, and he's in a, in a pressure pack situation and those things are going to happen. But the bottom line is he's very, very talented and he's taking advantage of the opportunities that have been presented to him. And he said he never had to do that before, is, you know, battle back from adversity, being right. so young. I mean, you know how that is. He, he's, he's being tested. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, that in a way, you know, it's easy for us to look on the outside looking in and say those things that he's experiencing this year, maybe it made him better prepared to have the kind of weekend he had this weekend. Mm -hmm. Certainly it'll be good for him as he moves forward in his racing career because – I don't care how many races anybody has won in big-time NASCAR racing. They've lost a whole lot more than they've won. So being a successful racer long-term is not only about how you handle victory, but how you handle defeat. It was his second win of the season, and Ryan Blaney came home second, as, uh, as Hermie just talked about. Austin Dillon was uh, third in the race. Brendan Gaughan, another nice showing, was fourth. And the points leader, Chris Buescher, was fifth. He still leads the uh, Xfinity Series points over Ty Dillon. And uh, Chase Elliott, Chase Elliott had a little little bit of an issue there. Talk about that. Yeah, he had some damage uh, to his car, and you know, that's a that's a team and a driver that, you know, I think a lot of people expect it to, especially after the season he had last year, to to really contend, not only to repeat as champion, but to win. I wouldn't have been surprised going into the season had he won five or six races. <laughs> uh, he's with a really good crew chief and Ernie Cope, who's won with a lot of different drivers. And they're in a little bit of a, I'm not sure it, it's a slump as far as speed's concerned, but a lot like Eric Jones, they've had a lot of things go wrong. Remember a couple of weeks ago, I was doing the television for the Xfinity Series race out in Iowa, 
you know, about a month ago, three weeks ago, mm-hmm. and Chase Elliott was leading with about 500 feet to go to get the white flag, and the caution came out, <laughs> and he ended up losing the race on tires. So, you know, they, obviously uh, a great team, but they have, they've had some gremlins the last couple races as well. Pretty good points battle, though, in the Xfinity Series race right now. You've got Chris Buescher only uh, or leading Ty Dillon by 29 points, and then Chase Elliott's only 43 back, and then Regan Smith, 62, and Daryl Wallace Jr., 66. I mean, any of those guys can can make a run if Chris has some some issues, and, and we could have a, a much, much closer race than it, it is. It appears to me that the Xfinity Series right now is just wide open. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, the Fords started out struggling, and they found some speed, and you see the, the Roush Fenway cars getting better, and obviously the 22 is a threat anytime he goes on the racetrack. The uh, the RCR cars have been fast all year. You know, it, it, it's, it's nobody really has a, a dominant hold on that series, and so it's going to be fun to watch as we head through the summertime. If the dog days of summer, as they call it, if it weeds out some of these championship contenders and see who's left standing as we battle down the stretch in the Xfinity Series. And Ty Dillon, there's some talk of him. Obviously, he wants to go cup racing, and they're looking for sponsorship for Ty is that realistic for next season? Well, I mean, if they find a sponsorship, yes. Sure. But Ty needs to win some more races. Mm-hmm. You know, he's a talented driver. He's got a good team behind him. And, you know, but, uh, it was, you know, I think I think another, uh, I'm not saying another year in you know, Xfinity, but, I, you know, it's still a lot of racing left to go this year. But I think if there's a knock on Ty is that he runs well, a lot of races, really good qualifier, but, you know, doesn't win enough, mm-hmm. um, you know, and I think uh, he's still got time to do that, and I think he's certainly capable of doing that. Um, but, but I mean, you know, those that watch from the outside looking in, you want to see, you know, your drivers be able to seal the deal and go to victory lane, and, and, and Ty would, I'm sure, like that as much as anybody else. Yeah, and I mean, he's, he's such a talented kid, and you'd hate to see him be brought up too soon like has happened to a lot of other guys. Yeah, I don't know what the situation is at, Richard Childress Racing, as far as sponsorships, and, you know, sometimes, as you said, people get pushed to do things a little bit sooner than maybe they should because of sponsorship or what some kind of situation that has presented itself. But I think even if Ty were to make a move to to Sprint Cup Series Racing, he would eventually get it. Um, but I think a little more time in the Xfinity Series uh, would, would teach him a little bit more. I mean, these are longer races. And, you know, the cars obviously drive different. He's actually, in the in the few Sprint Cup Series races he's run, I, th- I think he's been mm-hmm. pretty impressive. Yeah. You know, with, with, the, with the limited amount of experience he's got in the Cup cars. But I would, like to, I would like to see him be able to close the deal and win some more of these Xfinity Series races as well. Are you a little su- surprised that Regan Smith hasn't been a little bit stronger this season? I mean, he's fourth in points. That's not bad. But I would have thought by now that, uh, that he would have uh, – you know, won a race and uh, be well, higher in the points. We just had a conversation about Chase Elliott. Mm-hmm. You know, they're teammates. This thing runs in cycles. I don't think right now consistently that the junior motorsports cars have the raw speed probably that the RCR cars do or maybe even the Joe Gibbs cars. Mm-hmm. But that runs in cycles. I mean, next week or the week after, you know, they may cycle back around and, and have that. I just don't think. Let me, let me make sure people understand what I'm saying. I think the seven and the nine are fast enough to win, but there's been times when the seven and the nine in the junior motorsports cars and other teams at certain times, they've had speed in reserve. They could make mistakes and overcome them. They could have a bad pit stop. They could have one bad fuel run during a race and be fast enough to, to make it up. For instance, right here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway, Austin Dillon dominated that race. There was a time when, because of pitch strategy and things, he got shuffled back in traffic. Mm-hmm. He was able to overcome it. He had a fast enough car to overcome it. I just don't think the 7 and the 9 right now, I think they're capable of winning any time. I just don't think they have an advantage on speed as they've had at times over the last couple seasons. And speaking of insight, Wendy Venturini, one of our co-hosts here at PRN, man, you got to check out her Racing Home podcast. Have you ever listened to that? It's fantastic. Yep. It's great. And Wendy hosts it on goprn.com or iTunes. Each week, Racing Home brings you behind the scenes to visit with members of the NASCAR family. It's a, it's a great feature. Racing Home brought to you in part by Exergen and their Smart Glow Temporal Scanner Thermometer. Back with more Fast Talk right after this. 
Go into the automotive section of Walmart and look for ZMAX Micro Lubricant Engine Formula with a special price rollback. The only one that lubricates metal at the molecular level, extending the life of gas or diesel engines to and four stroke engines, old or new, and works with any type of oil. Get ZMAX Micro Lubricant at Walmart and save a couple of bucks. Only $17.94 during the Walmart price rollback on ZMAX Micro Lubricant Engine Formula. Join Winn-Dixie and the Performance Racing Network for lots of fun on Friday, July 3rd. The event kicks off at 11 a.m. and goes until 1 p.m. at the Ormond Beach, Florida Winn-Dixie Store, located at 353 West Granada Boulevard. Experience NASCAR drivers talking about the challenge of tackling the Daytona High Banks and enjoy the parking lot entertainment featuring games and NASCAR simulators. What a great way to start your July 4th weekend. For more information, visit GoPRN.com. Download the PRN app and listen to us anywhere. This is PRN, the Performance Racing Network. This is PRN. The fans are on their feet, the lights are flashing, and we're ready for green. It is a three-way battle for the lead, coming back to the stripe at the white flag. This could be a three-wide situation. It is. Harvick's going to get around both of them here. Trouble in turn two. It's Joey Logano. Down the back stretch to the outside is a Ford. Inside is a Chevy. Here comes Keselowski. They're door to door into turn three. Four wide out of turn number four, but they're behind Kevin Harvick. Oh, the trouble up in turn three. Danny Patrick in the wall. We've got three cars spinning off turn two. Brad Keselowski has caught Kyle Busch right on his back bumper as they head into turn number three. Here comes Jay Leonard Jr. He tries to dive bomb going into turn 11. Hamlin spins, hits the inside wall. Here comes the battle for the lead in the Coke 600. Jimmy Johnson wants to take it away from Matt Kisses. He's got the bottom of the racetrack. And here we go. It is about 15, 20 people fighting. Punches flying left and right down here. It is a mob scene on pit road here in Texas. This is PRN. Back here at Charlotte Motor Speedway, Fast Talk. Steve Richards in for Doug Rice, who's a little bit under the weather with uh, Hermie Sadler here co-hosting and looking for Eric Jones this past weekend's winner of about everything you could put on the racetracks. <laughs> Going to call us up in a few minutes, Hermie. Yeah, really good win uh, wins uh, for him in the Camping World Truck Series. He is actually, uh, for those who are not, were not aware of this, he won the truck race and the Xfinity Series race, but he is you know signed up to run for points in the camping world truck series so mm, okay. that is the series that he is getting points in and that he is con- you know right now in a battle with uh, matt crafton and tyler reddick and the other drivers in the camping world truck series so both wins are huge but that win friday night for him in the truck series as he is you know looking for that championship was a really big turnaround for him especially given the issues he had you know back at Kansas Speedway, he led 153 laps, ran out of fuel. Mm. Here at Charlotte, he was a dominant truck. There was a late caution. He got beat back to the line by Casey Kane in a green-white checker by inches. Then you look at uh, Dover. He had uh, two tires. Uh, Tyler Reddick had four tires by pit strategy, got passed with about 10 to go, lost that race. Texas, battery problem. Uh, you know, battery went dead, lost all that time. Uh, Gateway. A dominating truck again. He and Matt Crafton were the class of the field. He spins passing a lap truck. The tire comes apart, rips the battery box out. He loses power again. And it's just been any of a number of things that have, you know, tried uh, this this young racer and put him in a little bit of a hole chasing down veteran Matt Crafton. Now, you know, Matt had a little bit of a, uh, a setback a couple of weeks ago at Gateway as well uh, when he was spun by, you know, John Hunter Nemechek. So, uh, it seems like, uh, we're going to have a good battle, you know, for the championship shaping up, um, in the camp and world truck series, as you mentioned, as well as the Xfinity series. It seems like when you got a kid like Eric Jones and these things just keep happening and happening, you know, they talk about this the day after the day after and try to figure out what they did wrong, what they did right, how to go forward. And then something else happens. And then you discuss it again. Does that just kind of pile up it, it does but you know you've, you've got a 
you know, you've, as a, as a, as a driver, you know, and I said this to Eric, when I talked to him at the racetrack one weekend, you know, I said, it's bad, mm -hmm. but what if you just had a 15th place truck every week, <laughs> yeah. you know, with no chance to win. Right. So, you know, at the end of the day, you can't run as well as he's running and eventually not win. And I think he'll win big. I think he'll win in big numbers in the truck series, Xfinity series, and eventually move on to cup. He's that talented. He's got that, you know, that rare ability that we see at, at this young age with this reasonable lack of experience and he can, he can drive a truck looser than some. And he, he, uh, he, he, he does a lot of the little things. Very, very good. He's good on restarts and, and those kind of things. But at the end of the day, I, I think he has to realize that, you know, he is in a winning car and winning truck every week and, he can't allow what happened last week, two weeks ago, six weeks ago, affect what's going on tonight and, and, and keep him from an opportunity of winning uh, that race that night. How good is he compared to Joey Logano when Joey was his age? Um, I think they're comparable, but, but Eric, to me, is, is, has shown more earlier on mm -hmm. uh, than Joey. Um I think, and we mentioned earlier about being pushed too soon. I think it's, you know, most people, not all, but most people think that Joey was maybe pushed a little bit too soon. And I hope, you know, with Eric, they'll allow him a little bit more time to, uh, to con you know, continue to, you know, uh, work on his craft and develop sure. not yeah. only on the racetrack, but being able to handle that type of a lifestyle and all the demands from team, sponsor, owner, a lot of demands on your time when you get to that top, top level. And I think Joey uh, Penske took advantage of all the issues that Joey had at, at Gibbs. Mm -hmm. By the time he got to Penske, he was ready to be a champion stock car driver at the highest level with everything that involves. And Penske is, is, is uh, realizing the benefits of that. Well, and Jones obviously is driving Gibbs equipment. Sure. And so is Joey. So I'm was sure they've Joey learned. Logano. They've, they've learned. Sure. Yeah. They, they know. Yeah, they know they've got a gym. Mm -hmm. and I don't think you, you know, I think uh, Joe Gibbs Racing will do whatever necessary to hold on to Eric Jones, as will Toyota. He's a rare talent, and I'm curious, just like a lot of other people, to see how over the next couple of years, uh, how they steer him, where they steer him to. Because the next question is, where do they fit? It? Where does he fit in at Joe Gibbs Racing in, sure. in the cup side? Sure. I mean, you're going to let Denny Hamlin go? You know, I mean, what you can only have four. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of, you know, with every idea that brings up a lot of other questions as well. And sometimes time just has to run its course on these things. While we're waiting for Eric Jones to call in, I want to uh, congratulate Dale Earnhardt Jr. on his uh, engagement. How, how, how about that? How, how surprised were you? Uh, not, not too surprised. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's, I figured it would happen eventually. Yeah, I mean, he's um, basically for the last, and we've had a chance to be around uh, Dale and Amy, some, you know, socially uh, mm -hmm. over the years. And I, I think we all knew in that group that, that she would be the one it seemed like, and she got his attention more than, uh, than any, anybody I've ever seen before. And, and they basically, you know, have, have, have been engaged as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> you know, for the last three or four years. So they compliment each yeah, other. Very yeah. Well. I, mean, I think she's been good for him. Uh, he's obviously been good for her. And I think it's really helped him over the last couple of years and made him a more, He's always been a great guy and a lot of fun. And, you know, when it came time to get serious, he could get serious. But I think she has helped him become a much more well-rounded uh, individual in a lot of different areas, and I think he's the better for it. He just seems a lot happier these days, a lot yeah. looser and just, just like, hey, you know. And I think She's brought a better perspective to him on, on things. You always need somebody mm -hmm. uh, when you're in his position. You always need somebody to, to talk to or, or bounce things off of. And it's always good to have somebody there supporting you. Well, and like all of us, he's outkicked his coverage. So, we've you know. all, I think we've all done that <laughs> at some point. In time. Hey, join Win Dixie and the Performance Racing Network for fun on Friday, July the third, in Ormond Beach, Florida. Experienced NASCAR drivers talk about the challenge of tackling the Daytona High Banks. Enjoy parking lot entertainment featuring games and NASCAR simulator cars. For more information, go to our website, goprn.com. Attention race fans, announcing the first motorsports cruise this December that's going to blow your mind. We're going to take you places and get there fast. Come see appearances by over 15 of NASCAR's finest drivers. 
including Joey Logano, Carl Edwards, Matt Kenseth, Greg Biffle, Trevor Bain, Sam Hornish Jr., plus NASCAR Hall of Fame driver, Daryl Waltrip, and many more. Drivers with hundreds of race wins, with 75 million fans, all appearing for you. Then, just when you think it couldn't get better, we've got the biggest names in concert, like Ricky Skaggs, Mac Powell, and more. Hurry, the first motorsports cruise is filling fast. Get your cabin today and check out motorsportscruise.com for more details. You don't want to miss this. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go cruising, boys. Save $100 off your cruise vacation when you use promo code PRN. This is Kyle Busch. This is Clint Boyer. Hey, this is Joey Logano, and you're listening to Fast Talk on PRN, the Performance Racing Network. Hi, this is Brett McMillan. Join me each week for the O'Reilly Auto Parts Pit Reporters. This guy, he is a real champion. He acts like it off the track, on the track, and I'm not surprised. What's amazing about Joey is he still sounds like he's 16. He says, gosh, and cool, and neat, and what did you think when the pack was coming behind you, Joey? Oh, God. The Carl Edwards I saw the last two weeks couldn't have been happier. And I think a lot of it showed on the racetrack. The O'Reilly Auto Parts Pit Reporters, right here on PRN, the Performance Racing Network. 25 years of screaming NASCAR race fans. 25 years of raw emotion, roaring engines, checkered flags, and pit road brawls. This isn't just history, it's history in the making. Join New Hampshire Motor Speedway for its 25th anniversary and experience it for yourself. Buy your tickets now for the July 19th New Hampshire 301, part of the Oxford Casino Season of Speed, 603-783-4931, or visit NHMS.com. Back at Charlotte Motor Speedway, Steve Richards along with Hermie Sadler, and this is Fast Talk. Doug Rice a little bit under the weather tonight, so we allowed him to stay home and kind of recuperate. Jeff Gordon's final race in Sonoma, his uh, hometown where he grew up racing. A lot of big things planned for Sonoma Raceway, and Jeff Gordon, he was out there this week and uh, went to the uh, little quarter midget track where he uh, first raced, and uh, that must have been really special, Hermie. Yeah, I mean... I, and I feel on a completely different level doing different things at this point in my life. The most enjoyment I get is in watching my kids achieve and, and do things and, and realize or start to realize their dreams and, and chase their dreams and all that. And every time I, you know, you see a picture of Jeff, you know, with his kid um, and, and, and going back to his roots a little bit and, and living through some of that, you know, through, um, through his kids is great. I've talked to Jeff on many occasions about, the, the last couple of years and how, you know, it's always great to win, but to win the last couple of years and to be able to have his family and his kids old enough to really know what's going on and understand it, uh, is a really cool thing for him. And he's, you know, he said that on a couple of different occasions. So he's had, you know, uh, a lot of history out there in that part of the country. And wouldn't it be special, especially if you're a Jeff Gordon fan, mm -hmm. as much as Jeff Gordon needs a win mm -hmm. and as good as he's been on road courses throughout his career, to be able to get that win at Sonoma, get in the chase, do all these things with uh, with one shot out there at Sonoma. Well, I'm sure that's what uh, Steve Page would like to see too, the general manager of Sonoma Raceway. Steve, there's a welcome to Fast Talk, and there's there's a lot going on out there surrounding Jeff Gordon, isn't there? There is. This is uh, you know obviously every track that Jeff comes to this season when it's his the uh, the last visit, it's a pretty notable thing because he's one of the most remarkable personalities and talents that we've seen uh, come through our sport. But um, when when he's in our area, it's extra special because he grew up eight miles from this racetrack and uh, cut his teeth in racing and and um, has not only that, he's had a f phenomenal record of success on this track, winning five times. And um, so the following out here is tremendous. Uh, we've got um, our ticket sales are way up. People wanting to come out and see Jeff do his last tour on this road course, and uh, we actually spent quite a bit of time with him on Saturday. Had a couple of terrific events that I think were very emotional for him to come back 
uh, we had him up at uh, Rio Linda at the track that he raced, the quarter midget track, as you mentioned. Mm-hmm. A lot of old friends and, and uh, a lot of old memories for him. And then we brought him back down to Vallejo and uh, had a uh, rally with some kids at the uh, middle school that he attended. And uh, it was just a, it was a very fun day. And I think Jeff was very moved by a lot of what went on. And it just really reinforced what a um, the, the depth of the roots that he has in Northern California and around Sonoma. Steve, this is Hermie Sadler, and, and congratulations on everything you guys have going on uh, at, it, at it, that beautiful facility. You guys obviously have something that not many other people have, and that's a wonderful racetrack and a wonderful setting, wonderful view. In, in addition, on and, race and week... A few, and a few right turns. And a few right turns, that's right. <laughs> yeah. In addition to... Obviously, the, the the big event, which is the Sprint Cup Series race. What what does the rest of the weekend look like for the race fans who either are already planning to go out for race weekend or or thinking about whether to come out live? What what does the complete race weekend look like for the fans? Well, we've got it. We've got it pretty well packed with activity. Uh, if you can't find something to do here, you're you're not trying very hard. We we actually are going to be featuring Jeff a lot. We have a uh, Q&A with him on Saturday morning that we'll be doing with the fans. Um, but, um, you know, we just, beyond that, just the usual bag of tricks. We've got a the uh, Patriot Jet Air Show that is, uh, we keep trying to think if there's something better we can bring out, and our fans keep telling us it's the best air show they've ever seen, and so they'll be back, and we've got a Red Bull stunt plane. We've got a Ferris wheel. We've Save Mart is building out a whole breaking zone with driver appearances and music and interactive activities. And we will even be featuring uh, in our winner's circle the last semifinal of the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest. With, now you're talking. With Joey <laughs> Chestnut. It'll be the week before the big uh, finals at Coney Island. Mm-hmm. So um, lots of, you know, I mean, it, it's a beautiful spot, as you well know. And we're right here in the mouth of the Sonoma Valley, one of the great tourist destinations in the world. And um, we've built out some new fan environments with a uh, Redwood Lumber Company, some new a new deck up at Turn Two, new concessions, all uh, uh, fan areas that are shaded by beautiful redwood product and beautiful view looking out uh, over the grapes in the beautiful Sonoma Valley. Also, uh, I see where you have Arnold Schwarzenegger driving the pace car. We have the governor will be uh, driving the pace car on Sunday morning. I'm, uh, Should be interesting. Forward. It, uh, he, there is nothing the man does that isn't interesting. So. <laughs> Steve, I was yeah, looking, at, was looking at some stats uh, on your racetrack, and we, we, we always refer to in the racing community as road course races being wild caught races, and you guys are on a pretty impressive streak of different winners. Looks like it's up to 10 in a row. What, what do you attest that to? And if you had to pick a potential uh, first time winner, uh, at your racetrack this weekend, you have your eye on anybody? Well, the the uh, the change is really in, in terms of having so many different winners over ten years is, is really different from when I first got here. And there were certain road course specialists who you always look to, whether it's Ricky Rudd or or uh, Rusty Wallace, and then Jeff Gordon became such a strong competitor here. And now it's just anybody's game. I mean, if I had to guess who I would put my money on the last two years to win our race, Carl Edwards uh, would not have been um, among the uh, favorites. And we, there are just so many guys who are so good and have devoted the energy to, to become better road racers. And uh, it's just, it's just really anybody's game. Um, Jeff would obviously be a huge local favorite if he were to win. Uh, but Kyle Larson has, has really been good on this track, and, uh, and another kid that's got local roots, and I, and I think uh, he's someone I would watch very carefully this weekend. I think it's Jeff Gordon. I really do. I, 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 Hermie, I just I have a feeling that Jeff is going to come in there. If you believe in fairy tales, that's, yeah. that's what's going to happen. Yep. Yeah, I, I really do. There, that would be a very emotional winter circle, and there's nothing I would love better than to hand that trophy to him this Sunday. Any, uh, Steve is right. <laughs> Sorry about that. I thought did I lose you there. No, no. I, I thought I thought we lost you too, but we're okay. we're we're still here. Um, is is are we close to a sellout, Steve? 
Uh, we do not own a sold out sign. Uh-huh. Um, we um, we have lots of room on the hillsides and lots of GA seating, but we actually have some good reserved seats remaining for Sunday. Although we're 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 tracking well ahead of last year's sales. That the you know I think um, there are lots of lots of things that we can attribute it to. The the racing has been better. I think the 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 chase format and the and the exciting championship has drawn a lot of attention to to NASCAR again. I think the economy is rebounding, but I don't think there's any question that Jeff running his last race in Sonoma has contributed. We have a, a lot of fans who have not been out here for a few years that are reactivating their accounts and, and buying tickets, and so we're looking forward to welcoming those folks out and making sure they have a great time and, and uh, keep Sonoma Raceway in their plans in the future. Well, Steve, we appreciate you calling in. It sounds like it's going to be a wonderful time. We can't wait to get out there. It's one of our favorite trips of the entire NASCAR season here at PRN and, and uh, looking forward to seeing you and Diana and the entire staff. Absolutely. We look forward to it and appreciate your time. All right. That's Steve Page, the general manager at Sonoma Raceway. Back with more Fast Talk and Ross Kenseth right after this. Go into the automotive section of Walmart and look for Z-Max Micro Lubricant Engine Formula with a special price rollback. The only one that lubricates metal at the molecular level, extending the life of gas or diesel engines to and four stroke engines old or new and works with any type of oil. Get Z-Max Micro Lubricant at Walmart and save a couple of bucks. Only $17.94 during the Walmart price rollback on Z-Max Micro Lubricant Engine Formula. Dale Earnhardt Jr. has won the Daytona 500 for the second time. Dale Jr., driver of the number 88 Hendrick Motorsport Chevy, here to talk to you about the official fuel of NASCAR, and that's Sunoco. Sunoco makes high-quality performance fuels for the greatest drivers in the world, on and off the track. Whether I'm pulling up to the pump or off pit road, Sunoco is the fuel that keeps me going. From the racetrack to the road home, I fill up with the official fuel of NASCAR, Sunoco. This is Dellen Hart Jr., and you're listening to Fast Talk on PRN, the Performance Racing Network. Attention race fans, announcing the first motorsports cruise this December that's going to blow your mind. We're going to take you places and get there fast. Come see appearances by over 15 of NASCAR's finest drivers, including Joey Logano, Carl Edwards, Matt Kenseth, Greg Biffle, Trevor Bain, Sam Hornish Jr., plus NASCAR Hall of Fame driver Daryl Waltrip, and many more. Drivers with hundreds of race wins, with 75 million fans, all appearing for you. Then, just when you think it couldn't get better, we've got the biggest names in concert, like Ricky Skaggs, Mac Powell, and more. Hurry, the first motorsports cruise is filling fast. Get your cabin today and check out motorsportscruise.com for more details. You don't want to miss this. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go cruising, boys. Save $100 off your cruise vacation when you use promo code PRN. Back with more Fast Talk here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. And, of course, the uh, Cup guys had the weekend off, but the Xfinity drivers and the Truck Series drivers raced over the weekend, and Ross Kenseth made his Xfinity Series debut at Chicagoland Speedway, and Ross came home sixth. And, Ross, congratulations on a great run. Thanks. Thank you very much. It was a lot of fun. I was happy to be able to drive that car this last weekend. Now, your dad and you, uh, during a press conference the week before, your dad was asked what would be a successful week, and your dad rattled off all these things, not necessarily a win, but you know, communication with your crew chief and not making mistakes and things like that. Do you think it was a su- su- successful weekend? Yeah, I think so. Pretty much across all fronts, I feel like um, you know, when we first started the weekend, um, the car was kind of a handful to drive, and wheels and the guys... Um, and we, we put a lot of work into it. Maybe made a lot of adjustments from the moment we unloaded until even during the race. And I felt like we got along great. I felt like my my feedback they were able to uh, adjust on that and make progress, pick up speed. And I felt like by the time of practice ended, we were top, a solid top five car. And, and then even in qualifying, we showed we had speed to to be up there in the top three. And 
Just uh, we needed to race play a little bit differently to get that top five. But uh, all in all, I thought it was a good weekend. Ross, this is Hermie. Uh, congratulations on a great weekend, and all things considered, it had to be considered a, a success from from most people on the outside looking in. I'm curious. You know, you've raced lots of different types of cars on lots of different types of racetracks. I'm curious. How did the weekend experience go compared to how you maybe thought it would go? Or uh, maybe was there anything that you learned during the course of the weekend that really caught you off guard in the Xfinity Series? Uh, I mean, I learned a lot. It was, um, you know, I think my, my, my biggest hurdle from the, from the get-go was um, just knowing how loose the car needs to be and how loose it really is or what the balance needs, it needs to feel like from – when we unloaded, the thing was real twitchy, and, and um, we ended up spinning it out there out of four, and, and um, thankfully we cut it off the wall and out of the grass to save that car. And, and once we worked on that and got, got it drive a little more comfortable, you kind of find, found out where that edge was. And then come race time, those restarts were, were, were pretty insane, and we just um, I was real conservative at the start, just uh, see everything played out, which towards the end there we got real aggressive, and and it's kind of what we have to do in, in, in the Xfinity Series to really, really, really pass guys. You know, you can get three, four, or five at a time on restarts, and that takes about eight, nine laps in a row, good laps to set a guy up and, and get by him. So it was, uh, I learned a lot. I feel like, uh, you know, if we would have had five more laps, I got through traffic a little bit better at the end. I probably could have ran, ran four pretty easy. I felt like we, we, we were around those guys most of the day and, and ran in front of some of them for the, for the most part. Just um, great weekend. I was, I was real, real thankful to, you put in a situation from Dollar General and JGR to, and TRD to, to be the guy behind the 20 car that weekend. And how nervous were you going into the race? Uh, I really wasn't that nervous. We just, um, I think, I think the, my, the most nerve wracking part of the whole weekend was, was getting back in the car for practice after I spun out. I just, uh, hmm. you know, going into it, you just, you just don't want to tear anything up and, and make, make any mistakes. And thankfully, the mistakes I did make throughout the weekend were, were minor. We were, able, we were able to overcome that. And we just, uh, a total team effort, and, and, you know, like I said, we just made a ton of adjustments during the race to get the thing driving good at the end. I think the last three runs there, I felt like we had speed that was comparable to the 33 and, and, the, and the guys that run in the top five. I think 54 and 22 are kind of in their own league, but um, like I said, I think we could have ran up there. I had a lot of fun. I um, wish we got that top five out of it, but uh, for being my first start, I'm happy. I just um, you know, hope I can do it again soon. Ross, having your dad uh, Matt Kenseth, you know, being a champion racer, I'm certain that having him as your dad is more positives, way more positives than potential negatives, but you'll, you'll always be compared to, or, uh, you know, be talked about in the same sentence along with him. I'm just curious at a, as a kid, your age with all the things that are ahead of you, how do you plan to manage or how have you managed to this point, the expectations that some are going to lay upon you because of your last name i think there's there's really no negative to that at all having him as my dad i feel like uh you know being being in the same sentence as him when it when comes to racing you know having him he's won a ton of races he's got a ton of experience he's won a championship at, at the highest level in the sport so um you know all that experience and knowledge there just um you know be able to pick his brain on a daily basis is uh i think really helpful and and just having solid weekends like we had at Chicago and I think I think really 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 helps that because I think gives everybody confidence in me and gives myself some confidence going in that that you know we, we can compete with with you know the best of the guys in the Xfinity Series and we can run up front and 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 we can, we can battle with them. We just uh, you know I think a little bit more seat time to get a little more comfortable because so, um, I think with the learning curve this last weekend was really steep for me. I feel like going in there, you know, the amount I learned from. The first two practices, from then the qualifying, and then even you know the first hundred laps of that race was um, was was a lot more than what I thought it was going to be, and and I, I felt like if we could go go through it again, knowing what I know now, we could we could be that much better. So, what did your dad say to you after the race? How did he critique you after the race, and maybe even today? Uh, he really had no criticism at all. He's, he's said my restarts were really really good, which which, which is obviously a big thing when you get to any of the three NASCAR series, um, you know, restarts seem to be when he's when he kind of fan out run three or four wide. And and we got ourselves in some pretty tight aerial spots a few times, and we were able to, we were able to come out of there and gain spots in every restart, which was good. And uh, well, One thing I, I definitely learned that I need to have some work on is uh, pit road. It's definitely a lot more competitive in, in, in NASCAR than any other series. You know, everybody gets all they can get from – working the timing lines to making sure they maximize our pit road to, you know, gain time. And 
that was one thing that was different for me. That was also my first ever green flag pit stop we made there last weekend. I felt like gave up a little bit of time getting in. I just wanted to make sure I didn't get any, any speeding penalties or anything, which uh, thankfully I didn't. And and just um, you know, the more you can do that, I think just the better off you are. Ross, I noticed before you did that uh, ran uh, the race at Michigan. Um, you know, ran this past weekend at Chicago Lane. You ran and won the Alka race at Michigan. Was that a planned? kind of a, an event to kind of get you more experience and seat time and how much did winning that race improve your confidence heading into Chicago land? Yeah. I, um, once I found out that I was going to be running that Chicago with, uh, JGR, I just, um, you know, I want to go as much mile and have experience as possible. And, uh, it worked out. Michigan was that weekend and, uh, Kenny Schrader racing had that weekend open and they got a great, great bunch of guys with some really fast race cars every week. And, and I had a lot of fun over there. I, I, le- I learned a lot about where the, where to be arrow wise on guys and how I was up the pass and as, as well as restart. So I think, I think that was a big help. Those cars are quite a bit different. Um, it's the extended cars. The draft is, has a lot bigger effect than that series. and doesn't arc a series, but all in all, I felt like it was, um, you know, a real big confidence booster for me. Well, congratulations, Ross, on a, on a great run and, uh, good luck in the rest of the season, the Arca series, and hopefully we'll see you in another Xfinity race. Who knows? Uh, I sure hope so. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right. That time with uh, with Ross Kenseth was our Napa know-how moment brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. Over 400,000 quality parts and 90 years of experience. Whether you're on the track or off of it, conquer the job with Napa know-how. Have you ever been driving and started craving delicious bacon? Mm, bacon? Of course you have. Introducing the Chase Elliott Bacon Buddy from Napa. Now cook this tasty treat off-road, on highways, or even while parking with the missus. Oh, yeah. Don't take our word for it. Hear what Napa's own Chase Elliott, reigning NASCAR Xfinity Series champion and bacon fan, has to say. I'm Chase Elliott, and I do not approve this product. The Chase Elliott Bacon Buddy. Not one of the 400,000 products available at Napa to help you conquer the job. At Wix Filters, we aren't the only ones who love engines. Just ask driver Ryan Newman about his favorite engine. The nicest car I got, hands down, would be this 49 Buick Roadmaster convertible. It's uh, one of the four cars used in making the movie Rain Man, and it's absolutely perfect. It's one of those restored nicer than original condition type cars. Vehicles like that are why we build Wix Filters to be the best in the world. From my lawnmowers to my snowmobiles to my old cars, my personal vehicles, and especially my race car, I've always trusted Wix Filters. Hi, this is Matt Kenseth, and you're listening to Fast Talk on PRN, the Performance Racing Network. Twenty-five years of screaming NASCAR race fans. Twenty-five years of raw emotion, roaring engines, checkered flags, and pit road brawls. This isn't just history, it's history in the making. Join New Hampshire Motor Speedway for its 25th anniversary and experience it for yourself. Buy your tickets now for the July 19th New Hampshire 301. Part of the Oxford Casino Season of Speed, 603-783-4931. Or visit NHMS.com. Thank you for calling the Kentucky Speedway Driver Hotline. Tell us how we can better your racing experience. Hey, man, that place is just too rough. Yeah, I love the track. Never change. Dang gone rough, man. Rough. Rough. The best love it. Others fear it. See the stars of NASCAR take on the roughest track on the circuit at the Quaker State 400. Brought to you by Advanced Auto Parts, July 9th through the 11th. For tickets, call 859-578-2300 or visit KentuckySpeedway.com. And you're with Fast Talk, Steve Richards, along with uh, Hermie Sadler, and I'm in for the uh, the sick Doug Rice. I was trying to think of an ailing, adjective, the ailing Doug Rice, yes. Under the weather, Harold Hamrick says. I, I like that. I like that. Mm-hmm. Kyle Busch, man, he's in a little bit of a pickle right now after uh, hitting the wall at Michigan and, and finishing 43rd. He's 39th right now in the points after, of course, he missed the first 11 races because of that uh, Daytona wreck. Man, it's going to be tough for Kyle Busch right now to make the chase. He's got to win. Yeah, I think he's got to win. I think he used up his mulligan probably at Dover Mm -hmm. when he was fast enough to at least finish top five and and had some issues. But I think he pretty much uh, put himself in a position where uh, he has to win. The good news for him, it seems like the Toyotas are 
are, are closing the gap and they they're having more speed and you know, he could win at any different you know, any given time. He's you know not bad on road courses, but mm-hmm. when you get to somebody like Kentucky, that's when I think you need to look at for Kyle Busch. I really believe that you know um, that kind of racetrack and the way things are lining up for him. Uh, he would be my favorite heading into that weekend. Well, the roughness of the racetrack or the new rules combination of all uh, combination, three? Uh, combination of all that. Uh-huh. Uh, I think uh, he loves that racetrack. Always runs good there. Needs a little bit of good fortune, but he, uh, you know, I, w- I would look for him to to be one of the the teams to beat uh, at Kentucky in a couple of weeks. But I wouldn't put the road course, you know, past him. But but you're, I think you're right. I think they've got to gamble or they've got to find a way to try to get a win. Uh, to get themselves in. He just had too many issues and too many bumps in the road after he missed all that other time. Other people on the bubble right now, you've got well, you've got Eric Almarola in 15th right now, Ryan Newman 16th, Clint Boyer 17th, Kyle Larson 18th, Danica Patrick 19th, and man, Danica could make the chase. She could. Um, you know, the last four or five races have not been mm-hmm. as good as some of her races prior to that. I, you know, there was a point in the season where she was you know 15th to 18th you know place consistently sometimes better didn't always finish better but potential to be better the other name that stands out in that group he just called out is is clint boyer yeah he he's a sneaky good road course racer mm-hmm. and, well he won yeah i mean Sonoma. but if you talk to a to a to an average nascar fan they they wouldn't throw clint boyer in the mix with a you know with a jeff gordon or an aj almendinger or a tony stewart or the ones that more people just you know, uh, you know, think or or have that history of road course racing. But you're right; he has one, and wouldn't surprise me at all to see him win either. But that's a team that's hanging in there, but they need a boost as well. Well, they change crew chiefs, so maybe that'll give them some sort. Yeah, of a they boost. got they got to try something. You know, sure, they 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 swap crews with the 55 and the 15, so we'll have to see if that pays dividends. But you can't. It, this is too competitive, and it's only 26 races to get it done. You can't sit pat. And wait till the chase is locked in, and then say, "We well, wish we'd have tried this. Wish we'd have tried that." They needed to shake it up, and that's what they did. Well, and st- what's uh, the person that Steve Page mentioned earlier, Kyle Larson? He's he's got a pretty good shot at maybe a top five at Sonoma. Yeah, you you just never know. You just never know, and that can be so much of a fuel mileage. Mm-hmm. Uh, to me, it's the it's the <laughs> it's the new version of short track racing. It's it's especially it seems like in the last ten fifteen laps. There's so much going on from people driving off the racetrack, getting driven off the racetrack, running out of fuel, this and that and the other. It always seems to come down to drama at the end of a road course race. And when you've got drivers, like we're discussing, that have to get a win, they have no choice but to get a win, you know they're going to gamble and they'll be willing to do whatever it takes to go to victory lane. Now, of course, A.J. Allmendinger won at Watkins Glen last year. What does that do to boost his chances at Sonoma? Well, he's just good on road courses in general. You know, he, you know, he ran uh, you know, several different road courses in the Xfinity Series for Penske and others. He's always going to be in the mix when it comes down to road course racing. He has that type of talent and ability on the road courses. So um, they, they uh, that team, as much as they've tried to, to branch out and be a more – well-rounded team Mm -hmm. their best chances are still at sonoma and watkins Glen to get in the chase because they led 35 laps last year they finished uh, or they started outside pole and there were various issues that happened to him during the race and he finished uh, 37th and that was that tied the worst that uh aj had ever finished at sonoma so i mean he should be really good this they 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 want to be known as a team that can compete on any given weekend and I think they're slowly taking steps to get there. But right now, they know that this weekend and when you get to Watkins Glen, oh, they're, two, they're two big bullets they've got, and they need to capitalize on them. Who has surprised you most this season, one way or the other, good or bad? Well, obviously, surprisingly, on the, on the, on the negative side is, is Tony Stewart. Mm-hmm. It's, it, you know, we all want and NASCAR needs. I mean, he's got such a tremendous following and such a tremendous – fan base that you know it's just really really unfortunate to see him have these kind of these kind of struggles and you just we're just waiting for the for the light bulb to come on and for things to you know turn around and 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 go the other way we just we just we just can't we just can't believe that 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 the 14 could be that bad and run that bad uh so that's the negative side of it and in the same camp i've been pleasantly surprised at 
the follow-up season that Kevin Harvick has had from a speed side of it. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk about Eric Jones, but Kevin Harvick, you know, all the second-place finishes, he could have won a handful of races as well. Um, so, uh, but, but, you know, going back to Tony Stewart, I just, I mean, as fans of the sport and, you know, I've raced with Tony a many a time mm -hmm. and when he's on, he's one of the best race car drivers I've ever been around. You can just tell how he races and his ability inside of a car. And, you know, uh, I, I'm, we're all waiting for him to, 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 to get it done. I totally agree. NASCAR makes its triumphant return to NBC Sports July 4th weekend. Don't miss it live from Daytona International Speedway. Check your local TV listings or NBCSports.com for a full schedule. Eric Jones on the line. He'll join us right after this. Have you ever been driving and started craving delicious bacon? Mm, bacon. Who hasn't? That's why fan favorite Dale Earnhardt Jr. and NASCAR Xfinity Series champ Chase Elliott proudly introduced the Chase Elliott Bacon Buddy from Napa. Now cook this tasty treat off-road, on highways, or even while parking with the missus. Oh, yeah. Don't take our word for it. Hear what bacon fans Chase and Dale Jr. have to say. Worst idea ever. You mean best idea ever. The Chase Elliott Bacon Buddy. Not one of the 400,000 products available at Napa to help you conquer the job. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It's July 4th weekend, live from Daytona. It's about rockets, red glare, white knuckles, and blue steel. Love taps, craving paint, and taking flags. It's friends, family, and a whole lot of faith. America, start your engines. NASCAR is back on NBC. The Coke Zero 400, Sunday, July 5th on NBC. Coverage begins July 4th on NBCSN. This is Denny Hamlin, and you're listening to Fast Talk on PRN, the Performance Racing Network. Go into the automotive section of Walmart and look for Z-Max Micro Lubricant Engine Formula with a special price rollback. The only one that lubricates metal at the molecular level, extending the life of gas or diesel engines, two and four stroke engines, old or new, and works with any type of oil. Get Z-Max Micro Lubricant at Walmart and save a couple of bucks. Only $17.94 during the Walmart price rollback on Z-Max Micro Lubricant Engine Formula. You've heard good things about Z-Max Micro Lubricant for cars. Now gun owners can get Z-Max performance for their firearms with new Z-Max Bolt Loop and Z-Max Bore Cleaner and Conditioner. Z-Max Firearms formulas penetrate, lubricate, and protect metal at the molecular level, reducing friction and breaking up powder residues. Protection like your life depends on it. New Z-Max Micro Lubricant Firearms formulas. See the videos and buy some now at ZMAX.com. Follow Ryan Newman, Brendan Gaughan, and Wix Filters. Go to Wix Filters' Facebook page. Wix, we love engines. Steve Richards in for Doug Rice tonight and Hermie Sadler and Eric Jones on the line. And, man, he loves trophies. <laughs> he has three of them in the past week or so. Congratulations, Eric. Yeah, man, thank you. Thanks for having me on. All right, Hermie. Eric, uh, congratulations on a, on a great weekend. I know uh, you were just ecstatic Friday night to, to win that Camping Royal Truck Series race at an Iowa for your second career win at that track and then to go on and com complete the weekend sweep at Chicago Land Speedway. And I mentioned this to you in, in Victory Lane, but, you know, winning is always good. But put in perspective what this weekend uh, was like for you, given, you know, some of the, uh, some of the, 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 uh, the unforeseen or, or unfortunate circumstances that your team faced, you guys hung in there and, and uh, just had a wonderful weekend. Yeah, absolutely. It's just uh, just nice to get everything turned around and heading back in the, in the right direction again. You know, we had a pretty rough go at, uh, the last month or so, and, and to get our tundra and back in victory lane was uh, just a big momentum boost for everybody and everybody on the team and just really needed that. So uh, it feels good to, to get back in victory lane and, uh, you know, get the uh, get the tundra where it, uh, where it really belongs. What were you thinking, Eric, when you were going through all the adversity in the past month or so before this past weekend? Uh, a lot, a lot. You know, that's uh, really the first time I've had to deal with, 
that kind of adversity, I guess. And, you know, I, I learned a lot through it um, and, and grew a lot through it and figured out a lot of things and, you know, learned how to handle things a lot differently. So it's, it was definitely a, a rough time for me. And, you know, I had to figure a lot of things out and, and figure out how to get a, a good balance on everything. And, you know, it was, um, it was definitely a rough time, but looking back, you know, it was good for me and it was good for me as a person and good for me as a driver. So I uh, just really wanted to get things turned around and get that win. And, uh, you know, I feel like every time you can win a race, it kind of, kind of fixes all those problems and, and gets everything heading, uh, heading the right way. Eric, I've had a bunch of people ask me over the, you know, last three or four weeks about you and, and your ability on the racetrack and, you know, you you live your life as it's going to get worse, you know, living your life in the media and everybody watching your every move and everything that you say and do. But I've also told people, uh, you know, that I would think you'd be more disappointed if you guys had a 15th place truck or 15th place car every week and, didn't have the speed, but that that wasn't the issue. How, how comforting was it even going through that, knowing that your team continued to work hard on the Xfinity side and the in the truck side, and and every weekend when you guys showed up, you had a a vehicle capable of going to victory lane. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely right. Um, you know, if we would have been running fifteenth and not even been close to a win, yeah, I would have been pretty upset. But you know, it's it's tough. It's it's a it's an interesting balance, you know, when you're that fast and you just can't seem to win and it's, it's other circumstances. So it's hard sometimes to see the light that, you know, you are that fast and you're that close to winning, but at the same time, um, you want to just, you just want to get that win. And it's hard to remember at times that, you know, you're as fast as you are and you're as close as you are, uh, to wins. Were you were, uh, in the final laps of any of these races, were you thinking what could happen to me now? considering what's been going on the last month? Yeah, yeah, I, I would say so. Uh, I guess that's kind of the first time I've really felt that. And, you know, before when we get close to the, the closing last of these races, I felt like, you know, that, all right, this is it, this is ours. And, you know, now the, the last two wins here in the last couple of days, it's like, man, we started getting down to it. And I'm like, you know, what's going to happen now? What's going to go wrong? Or this thing's going to just blow up in my face with, with two laps to go. So fortunately that, that didn't happen. And, it was nice to get that win and get uh, get everybody's confidence back up. And, you know, it's it's hard not to think when you go through stuff like that about what could go wrong. And, you know, I think that's what makes you a better driver is you are prepared for that stuff. You know things can happen, and, and it makes you look at things a little bit differently, and I, I think in a better way, honestly. So in this past weekend, did that kind of put that, you know, the last month kind of behind you and, you're, and you can stop thinking about it? Yeah, I would say so. Um, you know, I'm, I mean, it's still going to be in my mind, and, you know, I'm, I'm definitely not going to forget this time. But, um, you know, I, I think it just gives me a better perspective on everything. And, mm-hmm. and you know, learned a lot about racing in general and kind of the, the real mental side of the sport. But I think it'll eventually go away, um, you know, if we can knock out a few more wins here pretty soon that we'll get back into our uh, our, our track and I'm back get the train back on its tracks and get things going again. But it's hard not to think about those things uh, when you go through some of the stuff that we went through in the past month. Eric, we've got about a minute left. What are your chances to win the Camping World Truck Series Championship, and what's your strategy to get that done? Uh, I think they're really good. Um, you know, we definitely have to keep keep running like we are now and just keep things going in the right direction. We, we got ourselves in a little bit of a hole over the past uh, month or so, but it's nothing we can't come through and dig out of, and we did a, a good start to that over at Iowa, and if we can keep getting these max point days, that's going to be the best way to do it. But there's a lot of season left and a lot of time to do it, so I'm, uh, I'm excited for the rest of the season. And, and seeing what we can do. Well, congratulations on your wins this past week, Eric, and uh, appreciate you joining us here on Fast Talk. Congratulations right. and uh, good luck. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. All right. There's Eric Jones, your past, your winner this past weekend at Chicagoland Speedway and Berlin Raceway and Iowa Raceway. And wherever where, he went, he won. Wherever wherever he was, he, he was a winner. So anyway, uh, <laughs> Thanks to Doug Rice tonight for uh, asking me, Steve Richards, to uh, relief drive for him tonight, and hopefully he's feeling a little better. And also, thanks to Hermie Sadler for his great work as co-host tonight, as usual. I want to thank uh, not only Eric Jones, but Ross Kansas and Steve Page for joining us as well. Absolutely. And PRN is off to Sonoma Raceway this weekend for the road course race. Check your local listings or download our PRN app and listen to our broadcast this weekend. Next weekend, Doug Rice is back with more Fast Talk right here on PRN. Fast Talk on the Performance Racing Network was brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. 
Stop by your local Napa Auto Parts store and conquer the job with Napa know-how. Wix Filters. Visit Wix Filters' Facebook page and share your love for engines. Wix. We love engines. NBC. NASCAR makes its triumphant return to NBC Sports July 4th weekend. And by your neighborhood Winn-Dixie. This is PRN, the Performance Racing Network. Minutes and 30 seconds of maritime. Still on the network line, this is the three of the NASCAR Xfinity.